Happy Halloween! Today I want to share with you the five scariest moments for a SQL Server developer. I'm dressed as a lobster because it's Halloween and we decided to do Family Ocean theme. Alright, so scary moment number five. Imagine you spent all morning loading data manually from flat files, from other databases, from wherever. It takes a long time and you'd hate to have to do it again. You're nearing the end of your data load, jumping around between SSMS tabs, F5ing here, executing a query there, when suddenly, by accident, you press F5 in a window that had some truncate table statements. Suddenly, all of your work is gone. Thankfully, your DBA does a great job of taking backups. All you have to do is reach out to them, ask them to restore the most recent data, and your day is saved. You got lucky that time, but what about scary moment number four? Imagine you get an instant message from your DBA. Never a good sign. The DBA says, hey, Bert, how are you doing? You respond, great, how are you? Well, it looks like Instance XYZ has been at 100% CPU utilization for the past hour. I see that it's been running that whole time and it's using a scalar function. Of course, you would never do that. But it's possible that maybe recently you inherited some code from another coworker and you know they just abused scalar functions and this code just really needs a rewrite. You apologize profusely to the DBA. Obviously, you would never do that. And the DBA helps you rewrite your query to use a table value function instead. System resources go back down and everything is okay once again until you reach scary scenario number three. So you've been having a pretty good day. No major outages, no annoying customers. Uh, only thing standing between you and your ticket home is to finish troubleshooting this slow performing query. You execute the query after making all the changes you think you need to make and it's spinning and going. You decide, all right, let me just go get some water. I'll be back in a minute. And when you return, you go check the execution plan and you see a missing index hint. Now don't be confused, that green text may look friendly, but what it's really saying is that there's probably some kind of index that you could have added to make your query perform even better. So you decide to open the missing index details and just run it as is, but then at the last second you realize, oh, if I just include a couple more columns and maybe add another column to my key, this index will actually work for more than just this single query that I'm currently tuning. So you create that index instead and everything is happily ever after. Until the next day that is. Last night's data load failed, but since you get to the office early, you figure, hey, I'll just rerun these queries, this job, no one will ever know, it'll be done before anyone shows up for work. So while your job's running, you decide to, you know, go get coffee, eat some breakfast. You stumble into your one coworker and talk about that week's football game. You run into your manager and he needs to talk to you about certain things. You run into another colleague and she wants to talk to you about something else. And before you know it, a uh, whole hour has passed. But you finally return to your desk and see, huh, my job's still running. That's taking a little longer than I would have expected. You then check your email and notice that there's at least five emails in a chain saying, hey, is anyone noticing some problems going on with the SQL Server? None of my queries are running. You realize that your process is blocking all these other queries. So now the question becomes, do you kill your process and wait for the hour long rollback that's guaranteed to happen? Or do you just suck it up and wait for it to finish? And just as you have to make that decision, you see your queries finish and you don't have to make a difficult decision. Dodged another bullet this time. So the final scariest moment for a SQL developer is, one day you are working in the office on a team project. Everything's been going great. People are getting their work done. Procedures are being written. You leave for the day and you come back the next morning only to find that your stored procedure code has totally changed. What happened, you ask your teammates, when one of them says, oh, I needed to change a query to match my requirements. I didn't realize yours was affected by my change. You get nervous because your code was deployed to the dev server uh, and now it's no longer there. Are you gonna have to recreate that query from scratch? Fortunately, you don't have to because you remember as part of this project, your team started using source control and you remember to check in your changes the previous night. 
All you go do is look at the version history for that stored procedure, pull your script, be able to merge it correctly with the other person's changes, and there's no problems. So fortunately for us, in these five scenarios, while they could have been very scary, there was always something that kind of saved the day at the last minute. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this Halloween themed episode and I'll be back next week, regular time, regular place. Although I'll actually be in Seattle for the past summit. So if I see you there, say hi. And uh, if you're not a subscriber yet, press that subscribe button to be notified of all future videos and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Mm -hmm.